Hi everyone, and welcome to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. This is Kate Warnock coming to you from day two of the Synapse Summit here in Tampa. And I have another wonderful guest. We have Lauren Wright joining us. Lauren, welcome. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here. We are thrilled to have you. So Lauren, you are the CEO and co-founder of The Natural Nipple. Yes. So I'm so excited to hear about this company. Let's start with the fact that you were the winner of the Florida Blue Innovation Challenge. Was that in 2018? Yes, so October. October, oh my gosh. So still, you know, enjoying the you know, the, the glow from the wind. Yeah. So the thing that I wanted to find out from you, why is it that the Natural Nipple, which is a company that's focused on breastfeeding, mm -hmm. would be the winner of a challenge that was really focused on anxiety and depression? Yeah. Connect the dots for us. Okay, so um, I was very surprised at that one as well, but we took a completely different approach to treating anxiety and depression, whereas I think a lot of the other teams focused on once it occurs, resources that are available. We were opened up by saying, what if you could prevent anxiety and depression in your infant from the day they were born? And I just delved into the data about how breastfeeding for at least six months um, statistically really does reduce anxiety and depression, not only in the infant, developmentally moving forward into adolescence, but also for the mother. So postpartum depression is a huge issue, especially complicated by women when they start having latching issues. Right. And so I just give a clinical case um, of one of my patients collectively a lot of my patients, it's their story, and just how much they struggle through postpartum depression and how much they relayed to me. If I had a product that helped reduce my latching issues, how much that would have helped my husband, my mother, my baby, and, and me. Right. So, um, hence the natural nipple. <laughs> wow, wow. All right, so explain what that is. Let's, let's let our audience know what it is. Okay, so the natural nipple is a, a baby bottle and nipple that's designed after maternal shape and flow rate. So why it's novel is a mom can actually pick from one of four shapes that's more similar to her own. Okay. And then the flow rate is a huge issue. So um, we actually have a subscription model where from preterm birth all the way up to two years of breastfeeding, every two months we're gonna send you an updated flow rate in your shape that actually benchmarks maternal lactation average at that time. So there's zero discontinuity between bottle mm -hmm. and breast. You can leave your infant and be assured that you're not going to have trouble getting them to bed, latch back on after. That's really fantastic. You know, I was talking with Dave Pizzo and, and he was certainly involved with the Florida Blue Innovation Challenge and he said, the education that you provided, the entire judging panel, who <laughs> happened to all be men, um, he said it was it was just unbelievable um, to see the information that you, he said she clearly did her research, but it was the story that you shared. And I think too, we're always looking for solutions that moves the, you know, let's, let's move farther upstream and really catch a problem before it's a problem. And here you're working at the infant level yeah. in, in preventing what could later be a debilitating disease. So, you know, that and the fact that you're working with women and that case cascades across the family. I mean, you really have a solution that it seems simple, but the effects are dramatic, aren't they? Yeah, and yeah. I think I think Florida Blue liked it because anxiety and depression is just one aspect. Like collectively, if we can support women to breastfeed for up to six months, three hundred billion dollars globally can be saved in aggregated medical cost savings. So that's just from the ensuing neurodevelopmental, immunological. Um, you have autoimmune diseases that are reduced in both the mother and in the infant. So it's really, also economically, it's great for the environment. Like you're reducing right. so much of right. the formula containers that are being thrown into landfills by helping moms pump longer. Right. So it really hit that triple bottom line and um, also in the customer discovery process found out how much we can save hospitals. So um, just by helping prevent free flow drip rate and not flooding those preterm infants with milk that's too fast, yeah. we can save them $3,000 per infant per day. So there was yeah. 3,000 per infant per day. So that's like after you're, they're like having to stay in the hospital longer yes. and increase the consult cost, increase the length of stay because it's looking as if they can't, the baby can't feed independently. Right, right. However, really, it's just that milk is coming out too fast right. in the bottle. So, and the typical size of, of a NICU, how many infants are they taking care of at any one time? Do you know that statistic? Um, I know here at TGH, it's at least like 50 to 60. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. 
Mind blowing. All right, let's, <laughs> let's pivot a little bit, Lauren. You know, here you are, you're an, an, a nurse PhD student. Um, you have one more year until you graduate. Yes. Oh, so exciting. <laughs> you know, obviously women's health is something that's so important, yet it doesn't necessarily get the same degree of attention yes. from funders, from companies, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. How is it that you're working to kind of change that field or what kind of alliances would be beneficial to help women's health really move forward into the mainstream? I think just getting women angel investors attention because it is something I was very surprised from a panel of male judges to be able to capture the the audience and, yeah. and like bring the problem up to their attention. Um, but I think it's so important because this is affecting the workplace. Like if we actually can't support women through the process of breastfeeding, um, it's going to impact the quality of work when they're returning after three months of maternity leave. Um, so it's, it's an issue that we have to help support women through and also help normalize breastfeeding for them, you know, giving them a safe place to pump at work. Right, right. Um, because as, as more and more women are becoming like C-suite executives, this is this is something that it's on it's economically important. <laughs> right, right, absolutely. All right, my final question for you, women innovator. Here you are. Your co-founder is also a woman. What advice do you have for women that are really looking to start out? Is there a lesson learned that you would like to help someone get maybe farther along, uh, you know, into an innovation success story than what, like you have? Don't be afraid to mess up. Don't be afraid to pivot. Um, and fall flat on your face because it's those mistakes that early on will help you get to your success faster. I think it was like the process of doing customer discovery and being embarrassed enough to ask moms like, okay, like what is, what is a nipple shield? I don't know that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and not feeling afraid because, okay, I'm a clinician, I should know this already, but just getting out there and asking the questions of what's actually painting the population um, that you want to target and create a solution for. Right. Um, and surrounding yourself with people that support you, I think, is, is huge, even while you're falling. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Lauren, obviously, I think we're going to hear a lot more from you and your company. I'm so excited that you're both the winner of the Florida Blue Innovation Challenge. And here with us today in the Guidewell Insights Lounge, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Kate. All right, it was a pleasure having you. This is Kate Warnock. Thanks for watching. Thanks.